Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. In this video, it's going to be the part two to a previous video I made regarding setting up your own set of accounts using Excel. So in the last video, I went over all the pre-work necessary to prepare a set of accounts. This is going to be going over the actual accounts, what makes up the financial statements and how you can bring those numbers in, what to do with the formatting and just some general advice and information regarding how you prepare a set of accounts. Should be interesting. If you're thinking about becoming an accountant and you want to know what's involved, this is probably going to be interesting. If you're preparing a set of accounts and you have some sort of prior knowledge of accounting, then you might be able to fill in the gaps and prepare the set of accounts uh, leading on from this video. I do have a link in the section below, which um, is the template file that I'm using in Excel to produce these set of accounts. If you want to check those out, go click on the link, which is buy me a coffee, and it'll link you to a page where you can find a, a downloadable file where you can download this and then fill in the information as you need it if you're preparing a set of accounts. Um, obviously, you are liable for preparing that set of accounts. So like I said, there's going to be information that might be missing that you will need to fill in. So if you don't have any prior accounting knowledge, I would seek an expert. But if you're pretty qualified and know what you're doing, then this should be a really good start and should make it so you don't have to do all the groundwork that I did in order to get to this position. Now, a bit of background on me. If you haven't seen part one and you've just tuned into this, I was a qualified accountant at PwC, and as I was at PwC, I set up a business doing wedding photography, and as part of that, I prepare a set of accounts, I do all the tax, all that kind of stuff. So this is largely based on a template file that I use for my own set of accounts and submissions. So it's very much uh, a live file that uh, has the information you need in order to prepare a set of accounts. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. Anyway, enough about the intro. Let's get into it. Let's do it. So a set of accounts, how is it broken down? Now, I said you should probably have some accounting knowledge, but if you don't, I'm just going to go through quite quickly all the different pages that are involved. Uh, when you're preparing a set of accounts and all the information that you're going to need. So the way I've set it up is you can see I have lots of different tabs here for the different pages. Now, in the part one video that if you haven't seen, I'd suggest you watching, I went through how you should set up all the pre-information needed in order to uh, keep referring back and drag the figures in uh, to all the relevant tabs that I will go through now. Uh, so we won't go back to that. So the pages are page one, cover sheet, obviously. You want to have your company name. You want to have the report of the directors and audited financial statements. The period of accounts, which here is going to be the financial year from 1st of October to 2019 to the 30th of September 2020. The next page is your contents page. All these are pretty standard. And if you're familiar with accounting, you should have seen these a few times. but. Contents page, again, at the top of every single page, you're going to have what the company is, what the company's called, in which tallies up with your um, company accounts. You're going to have what the page you're on, the financial year end, and you're going to have the detail that's required within those pages. So here you have company information, director's report, which as you can see here, tallies up with all the tabs in my Excel, income statement, statement of financial position or balance sheet, it's as it's called, notes to financial statements, and then detailed income statement, which gives more detail than what's on page five. And this is part of the advantage if you do want to uh, buy the template that I've created, which gives you this file, which I actually think is a pretty useful deal. Then all this formatting is already done for you. So you can see I've created all this within page format. So when you come to actually creating the PDF or download, printing it off, you don't need to faff around with creating all this and sorting out all the tabs. It's already here. You can just chuck the detail in that's needed, fill in the gaps for the different account balances that I don't have within these financial statements. So, and you can see they're all in a page, they all got the right um, column sizes and all that. So that's page two. The next page is going to be the company information page. You're going to have your name or the director's names. You're going to have the registered number of that company. You're going to have the registered office and you're going to have the banker's name, which is going to be something like HSBC, Santander. Now, I said this in part one of the video, but Obviously, this business is my own wedding photography business. And as a result, it's a very small business. You know, I'm the only employee. I'm the only director. The registered office is pretty much, you know, my home address. And as a result, this in terms of this template, it'll really only be applicable so much with companies like that. Now, if you're a much larger organization, you might get away, you know, if there's 
small number of employees, you might get away with using this kind of template. But really, if it's a larger organization, then it might be advisable to use a proper accounting software. But there we are. So, so that's the company information page. The next page is going to be your director's report. This is a pretty standardized format. So this is just the information that you need when you're preparing a sort of account under general accepted accounting practices. And it's all it's sort of just all the information that you need to follow, um, talking about the director's responsibilities, you know, your signature, date of approval. And I guess I'm not going to go through this too much, but, um, you know, that's part of the advantage if you want to download the set of accounts uh, from that buy me a coffee section in the comment section below. Uh, but that page is definitely needed. Now, if you are an accountant preparing accounts for somebody else, now I would imagine you'd have accounting software, but there would be another page here and there would be a page within your uh, reg um, within your company information page talking about what accountants you use and what address they have. But I don't have that because I prepared this set of accounts myself, so I don't have an accountant. Next, you're gonna have your profit and loss account. I'll go over the numbers and how you can allocate these, but you can see a very simplistic, straightforward, um, income statement, you have your 2019 results, 2020, you have your notes section and very limited uh, level of detail there, cost of sale, administrative expenses, turnover, you know, all the regulars. Then you have your balance sheet or your statement of financial position. Again, very straightforward looking financial statement, the accounts you have, tangible fixed assets, um, current assets being cash at bank and in hand. And now, as I said in part one, because it's a photography business, I deal with pretty much just cash you know, bank transfers, but still just cash as opposed to people owing me money that going to go over a, a, a two year period. Then you have creditors and the creditors, what sits here is pretty much the director's loan account and the creditor being how much money the company owes me for say purchases that I've made on my own bank card related to business expenses. And then you have your equity statement and then you have comments here that are obviously required as part of preparing your set of accounts. Then you're going to have your notes section, starting with general information accounting policies where you have to talk about you know how the revenue how you recognize the revenue how you depreciate your tangible fixed assets and then you're going to jump straight into the different notes sections that relate to parts of your profit and loss account and your balance sheet so you can see here two operating profit relates back to the operating profit within your p l statement then the next section, which is going to be the notes carried forward, you're basically explaining each part of your financial statements where the reader of the financial statements is going to need more information. So the next section is going to be the tangible fixed assets and balances that are occurring on your balance sheet. So but tangible fixed assets. And the way that this is all obviously formatted is you're gonna have at the start, you're gonna have the cost of the items and then the next section is gonna be a depreciation and then the, the net positions going from last year to this year with additions and disposals. Creditors, so how much money is owing to external parties. So here you can see director's current account or director's loan account. Share capital, which is how much equity I have in the business, so one share at one pound. And then the profit and loss account. Now the last section is going to be a detailed income statement. If you remember in part one, where I broke down into subcategories, different costs, the reason I did that is then you can create here within your administrative expenses, all the categories that relate and bring them through using, you know, a sum if formula. So that's basically the set of accounts and how it's all formatted uh, as a very quick run through. Now, now the advantage of doing what I was talking about in the part one version of this video is by creating a workings tab where you have all the relevant information that you're going to need for the financial statements, you can now literally go through and, as I've done here, pick up all the formulas of the information you need from the workings tab. So the turnover, for instance, I've pulled through from the revenue section of my workings file. And again, this is another advantage if you want to buy the uh, template file that I've uh, put together because you can literally follow through the formulas of where all the numbers are picked up. And if you want to change the transactional parts of the detailed listing or the revenue part of the detailed listing, provided you keep, you know, some of the category names the same, for instance, on transactions, as long as you have assets, cost of sale, operating expenses, then all you need to do is then put the information in from the transactions and then refresh 
the pivot tables and it should feed through into all the different tabs within your PL across to your notes section. So each one of these 2020 figures pulls across literally to the area of the workings page that you've set up all the costs and revenue for. So within administrative expenses, it pulls it through to your administrative expenses, or as I've called them, operating expenses within the transaction workings. And so that's your PL, simple as you just have three balances turnover, cost of sale, administrative expenses. Now, I've assumed here, and this is where the added complication comes, that the tax within this business is say that you've started in 2019 and you still don't pay any tax because the costs of starting the business, buying all the equipment have exceeded the level of profit that you've made after adding back disallowable expenses like depreciation. So that is an added complication that you would need a note for had you, uh, if you were going to be paying taxes on your company accounts. So as I said before, that's these are sort of areas where this isn't fit for every single business. There's gonna be areas you need to add on Hence why an understanding with accounting is important. On your balance sheet as well, as you can see, I have cash in at bank and uh, don't have a debtors section or you know debtors amount falling due within one year, which relates to a separate note. Now, if you have money owing to you, if you have things like accrued income, then you'd have to have a separate section here and that would relate to a separate note. But because of the style of the business I have, you know, this is a much smaller business, much smaller operation. So as I said, if I keep going, these numbers where applicable relate to the working section that therefore relate to the transactions. On the balance sheet section, you can see tangible fixed assets relates to the fixed asset section. And again, I have the information here that's necessary for creating the note. So if I just skip past and go to the tangible fixed asset section, you can see I've put in all the figures that relate that are on the working section of the file. So everything's referring back to one section. And that helps because then you don't have loads of circular references going on. And you really have control over having all the information you need within one section of your Excel file. Since you're doing a lot of the processing work that say a software company would be doing if you bought an accounting software for uh, preparing small sets of accounts, you know, you are having to create that. And the best way of doing that is, as I said in part one, doing a transaction list and then pivoting data. So as you go through, cash it bank and in hand, you have your creditors within the working section. As you go through, the only the only other the only part where there's a bit of an exception is the profit and loss account section. Now I have that relating to this note. So this is the only bit where it doesn't go back to the workings. And potentially the best way of doing this would be to have it going back to the workings. But this is such a simple note where it's just talking about carrying forward the profit from last year and adding it on to the profit for this period, uh, which is obviously linking to your PL account. And you can see everything links through and everything balances as a result on your balance sheet. You can see this is linking to your director's loan account. And obviously the most important part is things like these two balances. So your net asset position and your shareholders funds balance off because your balance sheet has to balance. And it does that and it will do that even if I change certain transactional values or add lines as long as they're fitting within that pivot table and are allocated to one of the cost sections like operating expenses or cost of sale. So it's all, once you have the template in place, which is the, the worst part about creating this is actually creating all the template for the actual file. Adding in a separate note or adding in a debtor or adding in you know, accrued income and things like that should be the case of, you know, just, you know, creating a line here or adding in a debtor's note and then just labeling it appropriately, depending on your gap standard. And um, you're good to go linking back then to your workings page where you have your expenses. So it's all pretty straightforward, really. Um, the hardest part, like I said, is getting all the templates. So director's current account, you can see links back, shares, I think I've literally just written these in because it's just one pound. Then the notes section, as I said, this links then to your PL. I've linked it because the PL links back to your debt director's notes. You've got your purchases. And then here I have a sum if function linking back to a pivot table, adding it up. And then obviously this then links back and you can check that everything works through 2455 and 2455 there. So that's basically it. That's how you can do it. You can create your own set of accounts within Excel. Uh, part one of this video was going over how you do all the pre work, transaction listings, creating all what the, you know, the accounting software would. We'll be doing in the background, which is creating a general ledger, which stores all the transactions. Then once you have the general ledger, you want to pivot the data, create all the workings necessary 
properly. So you have all the information you need to link through to the actual set of accounts. Then you have the awful step of actually creating all the different templates, which I've shown you indirectly by going through each of the tabs and you have to create each of the tabs within one page and you have to make sure it all looks well formatted. If you don't want to do that step, as I said, go check out within the buy me a coffee section, template file with all the links linking through. Once you create the template, it's just the case of pulling through all the numbers and making sure everything balances. Now, what have I not done here? I haven't prepared things like T accounts. I haven't gone through and gone, okay, this cost, if that's cost of sale, that would have to go to cash. If this is operating expenses, that would have to go to cash. Cash. Now, part of that is the fact that it's a very simple business and I don't have, you know, everything does go back to cash basically. But the other way of doing that is just, obviously you have to have some knowledge of accounting, but if you create subcategories where it says, say on your revenue, whether it's cash or debt or here I could say, whether it's a credit or a, a cash, you know, creating a subcategory makes it a lot easier than when you pivot it, you know, you pretty much know that you're going between your P&L statement and your balance sheet. So there we go. Hopefully that was useful, informative. It feels like I whipped through that quite quickly, but I'm sure this video will still be like 25 minutes or something ridiculous like that. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Two sections, very quick on how you create a set of accounts in Excel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.